Hello, everyone, and welcome to Guys With Cameras TV. I'm Mike Zahora. I'm Ed Lau. And this is the news. News for another week. Another mm -hmm. week. So last week we talked about we, we were the talking new about the Canon White World camera. It, we, there was a rumor up. No, 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 don't, don't show okay, them yet. Don't show them yet. We're not going to show them yet. There was a rumor last week where, where well, not a little bit further than last week now, on the Canon Koreans, the Korea site. Korea site, yes. Where they had a camera underneath a white sheet. And we were tr all trying to guess, well, what is what that? It, what it what is, is that? The new we're waiting 70, for a new 7D. We're waiting for the, the rumored Canon medium format camera. And what, what we dreaded was, oh, man, it's Korea, it's Asia. They really like white cameras yeah. over there. What if, it looks like an SL1. Are they just doing a white SL1? And well, guess what? Yeah, we got a white SL1. Uh, Kiss X7 or whatever they call it. Asia. X1 or whatever. X7, or I think. Some, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and it's the SL1 here in, uh, in North America. Now, <laughs> this... So if you are, are in desperate need of an all white and gray camera... Oh, yeah. This is the only one on so the market. This is what floats your boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it might look really cool with L lenses on the front of it, an all white. Like that would, that yeah. would be kind of awesome. But well, they've got, come a, they've on, got a white and gray sort of the forty millimeter two point eight. I, I get it, but I mean, Canon, come on. We we've, we've been waiting for something new for a long, long time. You know, everybody's always been talking about how when when are mirrorless cameras gonna overtake DSLRs? I think sales have already already overtaken are, DSLRs. Are, I'm, I'm not sure. You know, not sure exact either. But sales uh, figures, but yeah, I'm pretty up. sure mirrorless cameras are outselling you know large bulky DSLRs these yeah. days, and people are always asking when are mirrorless cameras going to be able to take over in the in the professional field, like for for work, and with stuff like the the um, the A7, the A7, and the, and the A7R. A7R yeah, I think we're at the point where. As soon as Canon stops innovating, a lot of us are going to be thinking of moving on yes. to a different system, or just keeping what we've got. Like, Canon's going to need to do something ridiculous with a 5D Mark IV and a, and a 7D Mark II in order to keep customers. I think. Well, to keep up with what's kind of happening now. Yeah. I mean, you know, just today I was you know online and I saw like samples from the A7R, mm -hmm. right? And it blows they're, away they're everything yeah. that in, that they've compared them to. Uh, I think the lo low light performance is still a little yeah, it's, wonky, it's a but, little wonky, but but, but for, as a studio camera, I think I wouldn't I wouldn't hesitate to use an A7R for, I mean, for the for that kind of money. No, that's, yeah, probably, exactly. that's probably the most bang for the buck that you can get. I mean, you look at a site like Flickr or something. I know Flickr's gone down in popularity ever yeah. since, but even on Flickr, the most popular DSLR is still a 5D Mark II, and every a lot of wedding photographers I know shoot on a 5D Mark III. Yeah, but there was never a really a big incentive to upgrade from a 5D Mark II to 5D Mark III because yeah. it just wasn't that different. It wasn't that, that, that huge I think of that, a jump. Yeah. I think that if Canon doesn't do something ridiculous with the 5D Mark IV, like they did with the 5D Mark II, the 5D Mark II was the, the first with video, the first with a lot of you know different features, and it's become the standard workhorse camera. It is, and yeah. and you know a lot of people are now expecting the, you know the video features to sort of expand Especially and on, get better. And you yeah. know Canon has said something along the lines that they're not going to offer raw video in their lower <laughs> end cameras. Right? Not but, like they're really offering it on the high end either. Well, you need to hack it with Magic Lantern. Yeah. So. so, but that kind of brings us to the next camera we want to yeah. look at. So the next camera. This is the Black Magic Cinema, the Black Pocket Magic Cinema Pocket Camera. Cinema Camera. Yes. Yeah, which is it actually came out a little while ago. Uh, they were having trouble keeping these things in stock, but it is basically a one thousand dollars Super Sixteen, uh, yeah. 1080p, ten ten eighty p camera. Uh, you know, twenty four frames, thirty frames per second, uh, thirteen stop range. It you know it accepts thirteen stop range in the new with the new raw update. Yeah. So. Um, what's happened this week is that they've updated the camera to include uh, a 14 or what? How many bit raw? Uh, the whole 12 bit, 14 bit, something like that. Anyway, yeah, and 12 it's, bit <laughs> log cinema DNG raw. Yeah, there you go, 12 bit raw, which is freaking amazing for a thousand dollar camera. A thousand dollar camera. Yeah, you need to go to um, to a 5D Mark III or. I think the cheapest way to get raw on on a Canon is with a 50D hack. 
Or yeah, well, like yeah, that. You, need, yeah. you need the magic lantern hack. Yeah, to get, yeah. But this to is the cheapest one that does it natively. I think natively, just yeah. straight out of the camera. Exactly. Which and I think this is it's a crazy form factor too. It's it's, it's, it's so it's, tiny. It's a, it's a it's like a little point and shoot. Yeah, yeah. It's right, cool. but it's it does raw. It does high high end video. I mean, it's you know we're talking you know the quality out of this thing is amazing. You know there have been some samples online. You know with somebody shooting in the raw format. And the moray moire or mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it. However you want to pronounce it. However word. you want to pronounce yeah. it. Right. Was was really like insanely visible. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. But you know, and it's got no AA filter, so I mm-hmm. can kind of see why that would happen. Right. Uh, I think. Well, let, let's just first talk about what's the difference between raw video and regular 1080p yeah. video. Basically, you're just going to get. <coughs> Crazy dynamic range. Like That's your right. your dynamic range is going to go up by a few stops at least, mm-hmm. and you're going to you're going to see more detail closer to what what our eyes see rather than what our what our cameras see. Yeah, and, and there's there's really no real processing in the camera that's mm-hmm. happening at the same time. Yeah. Right? You're yeah. you're pretty much getting the data that comes out of the camera. It's like the difference between shooting raw and JPEG exactly. on, on your yeah. camera. You get a lot more flexibility. You get a lot more editing leeway, mm-hmm. and it's it's just a better way to shoot video overall. Yeah. It adds a little bit to your workflow, but actually a lot to your workflow. Yeah. So yeah. If, if you've got one of these cameras, all you need to do is go to uh, Blackmagic Design's mm-hmm. website and download the upgrade. It's version 1.5. Something like yeah. that. I don't have one of yeah, these, but I, I would really like to give one a try. Black Magic? Yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we'd like to try one of these guys out of. So that's this guy, and it, it kind of leads into the next camera again also. Mm-hmm. Right, or the next announcement, <coughs> and this is from Panasonic. Right, now, Panasonic says that they have a 4K capable Micro Four Thirds sensor. Yes, or something like that. So what, what do you got right there? Yeah, so it's a 4K sensor, um, you know, 16 megapixel. So I, like the usual uh, Micro Four Thirds sensor. But but here's the here's the interesting part. So this sensor is supposed to be able to shoot like full 4K video. You know, 30 frames per second, and it can go up to 120 frames per second at lower uh, at resolution. Yeah. Um, it might be 10. They don't like know an yet, iPhone. right? They, don't, they <laughs> yeah. don't know yet. But here's the thing, right? The G, uh, GX7 and the GM1 already, already have, have this sensor. Well, yeah. it, they're not something similar. It's, you know? yeah. The specs are almost identical in a lot of aspects of the sensor. Mm-hmm. So these cameras might actually already have this sensor in them. Just needs a firmware upgrade. Just needs a firmware yeah. upgrade. So we, you know, who knows what? See, the this is what I'm talking about. Is. You you have you have the mirrorless companies, the 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 Micro Four Thirds and the the Fuji Films and all those other uh, all the other small form factor cameras. You know they're innovating. They're making new. Exactly. They're making new things. Whereas I feel like Canon hasn't really made anything new since the 5D Mark II. Well, I mean, the only thing that that you know Canon's done recently, I think, that's of any significance is the Nikon as well, actually. Well, well, it's the dual <laughs> pixel AF. That, I know it that, actually that's works. cool. Yeah, I, I know. I, I loved it, but I, right. I didn't think it was. It's not groundbreaking enough for me. It well, you know, compared to what they've done over the last <laughs> yeah. few years, that's <laughs> groundbreaking yeah, yeah. for okay. Canon, I guess. And Nikon, Nikon's just come up with. You know, fancy dials and things on there. Well, on yeah, their yeah, they, they made a camera look older and made dials that are hard to turn or yeah. something like that. Great. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, clean, clean it up, Canon and Nikon. We need to. We, need we, to get we on. want to see some innovation. Yeah, we want to see something new. Come on. Yeah. So, that's it. Another week. Another week. In so, the news. Yeah, we wanted to say uh, if anybody has any sort of questions or topics that you want to see us discuss or. News, even like yeah, yeah. If you have cool news, you know, let us know. Yeah, share share it in the comments below, uh, or put it on Facebook, or you know, just tweet us. Hey, yeah, you you know, know. our hashtag is you know GWCTV. GWCTV. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, Michael Zahora. That's Ed Lau. (laughs) You can find him on Twitter at Ed Lau. You find him on Twitter at Michael Zahora. Thanks for watching. (laughs) Why do you mess that up every time?